Hey everyone, welcome back. I actually forgot to make this video. It was supposed to be uploaded right when I came back from traveling last week. So here it is now, as we ramp things up and prepare for Lua's Praying to drop on November 30th. You better be prepared for those Veruna builds I've got coming. This video today is a successor to my level 9k Hildren Muzzle Flash Balefire setup. I would not recommend this build today for solo 9k because it essentially trades in crowd control for even more firepower. Bigger boom, bigger kills. Armor strip was added in from abilities recently, which makes full strip builds somewhat problematic on Hildren under certain circumstances. So today, we have an alternative build to sit alongside the muzzle flash one from many months before. If you haven't seen that one yet, you can check it out at the card at the top right. I would still advise using the muzzle flash setup for endurance as nothing replaces a passive absolute crowd control ability. But if you want a stronger, faster DPS Hildren for 1-2 hours of steel pad survival, this new build might be just for you. Alright, so Veil Breaker armor strip changes made it so armor strip abilities are additive and now only need 50% strip if you cast twice, so or well, 4 times at 25%, whatever. But the main issue here is that Hildren has problems regenerating shields when enemies are full stripped. While the Muzzle Flash Hildren build was using 400% strength and focus on killing things fast with the massive blind making up for being unable to regenerate shields in a given area due to 100% strip until you move beyond it. Today we're using a non-full strip build. But Hildren is still a sitting duck without a form of crowd control since their base kit lacks it outside of pillage. Which while useful, takes time to pulse out and come back in and also requires a line of sight to inflict heat procs for crowd control if you're using blazing pillage. Simply put, her survivability is questionable in Steel Path without a helmet. Our solution today is Terrify. But wait, doesn't pillage already strip armor? Yes. But there are much more nuances to these two abilities than just that. Each one actually covers the weaknesses of the other. Terrify gives you non-line of sight crowd control through walls, and can actually strip enough armor properly to be viable even on a lower strength build. It is also instant hitbox. Unlike Pillage needing time to pulse and hit enemies both for stripping and inflicting heat procs for crowd control. Pillage on the other hand gives you status removal, which reduces the need for rolling guard on badly timed XMI unit status procs. This doesn't mean you can skip the mod greatly, but it does make Hildren safer to run. Pillage also regenerates her shields easily, which is something no other ability in the game can do because of how her shield economy as energy works. Pillage is also a permanent strip, so even if you run a negative duration build like we have today, you won't have to worry about armor stripping wearing off from Terrify. Also, Terrify cannot armor strip Acolytes, whereas Pillage actually can and can also remove a chunk of their shields. Though do keep in mind it will not strip their armor until all of their shields are gone. And because Hildren's 4 is effectively useless on a Balefire Steel Path build, we've subsumed it off for Terrify, which synergizes extremely well to make up for all of Pillage's shortfalls. So what does that Hildren build look like? This is a crit Balefire build, meaning we actually slot Combat Discipline in the Aura slot. If you have an Azure Archon Shard, you can actually slot it for passive health regen and then run a max rank Combat Discipline instead to save Forma. You'll notice that there is no rolling guard on this build, and that's part of the reason why I don't recommend using this for endurance and just 1-2 to two hour survival. Adaptation is here, because unlike Muzzle Flash, which is cast once and forget for the rest of the duration, you need to cast Terrify every single time you want to crowd control and strip most armor off. Hildren's abilities on this setup cost 35, 105, and 175 to cast. Terrify, on the other hand, costs a rather hefty 525 even with Streamline. Because Terrify is your main way to get enemies to de-aggro, having enough shields to actually cast it is extremely important and the reason why we slot both redirection and adaptation today to maintain the rotation. We cannot run negative efficiency like our Muzzle Flash build, because Terrify is an active cast ability and just absolutely rips through your shields if you don't build around it. Which begs the question, why did I make this build as the Muzzle Flash successor? There is a little known secret about the Balefire Charger. It is an AoE weapon, but here. This is it. It has 0% falloff within its entire hit radius. And range affects the base radius of Balefire. Blast radius mods are multiplicative to the scaled base radius. So you can end up with a massive spherical AoE just like our good old Tenant Tetra before it was patched to have 60% falloff. And the eventual altfire change that always burned the entire magazine. But you want that on a stick and as an exalted weapon? Here you go. That's our Balefire today, literally our pre-nerf tenant tetra aoe carpet bomb spam. 
This build today is made to be practical and comfortable to use, but it still reaches a 10.15 meter blast radius with absolutely zero fall off. And remember, this is our nerfed blast radius mod version ever since the AoE rework a few months ago. If Prime Fall Nation still gave plus 66%, we'd be at 11.7 meter radius. And that's with 235 range. If you wanted to go all out, you could run 280 range for some funny Relic Fissure BS, which would grant you 12.1 meter blast radius even post nerf, but 10.15 is enough for today. Compared to our Muzzle Flash Balefire build that ran only 145 range for a 7.2 meter Balefire, and post fulmination nerfs is now only 6.26 meters. Even our Blazing Arc on New Kildren, which arguably I'd say is a better build for DPS, but for Balefire, it only has 175 range and is not exactly a good loadout for that purpose. If you want to use the Balefire as your main DPS today, this is the best setup I can offer you. The 73 duration is still enough for 18 seconds armor strip on Terrify and doesn't really impact anything else on the build. Now, the most important part, do not skip this. I have a 125 strength modded for a very specific reason. We're running Hildren with Matarai today for sling strength plus 40% buff and power transfer casting speed. This makes casting Terrify super snappy, but more importantly, strips 99% armor off at 165 strength. Why is this important? Why do I not want to full strip in a single cast? Because this means if I screw up, I can still cast Pillage, remove armor, and still restore my shields. You'll be casting Pillage pretty regularly anyways, but this ensures that every single time you cast Pillage after Terrify, you will always get shields back for the first engagement. Also, having to only mod 125 strength means I have a lot more mod slots available to push range all the way up to 235, and even fit on that streamline you need for Terrify spam. Prime sure footed is for typical anti-CC reasons and Arcane Velocity, with Arcane Avenger will let us shoot our Balefire much faster. Speaking of Balefire, let's take a look at that build. You cannot use Weapon Arcanes on Exalted Weapons, so this is the best we got. The build I'm using today is actually missing about 20% of its total damage because of the polarity problems for other Balefire builds. This hollow point is supposed to be Prime Target Cracker, so if you just run the Prime mod instead, you're gonna do 20% more damage than what I showcased today. We're on corrosive damage because not full strip, though a lot of enemies will be full strip regardless due to overlapping terrify and pillage casts. So if you want a little more damage, then you can bring viral instead, but just keep in mind this is a damage loss on anything that isn't full strip. Since Balefire has a crap status at 10%, we're bringing a Panzer to apply Viral for us through Viral Quills instead. As Balefire does not have the room nuking potential like the Blazing Archon Pillage setup, or the more recent Equinox nuke setup, or Ember's Null Star nuke setup, this means Quills are actually going to spread pretty consistently across surviving enemies and maintain Viral procs wherever you go. Modder is actually pretty handy if you're running a higher rank combat discipline since it will save you from killing yourself by accident. Devolution gives her infinite cat lives and the usual radar with vacuum to find where enemy spawns are better. Synth does nothing here since Balefire has no ammo and Hildren has no energy economy for equilibrium to synergize with. I would still recommend bringing a weapon to kill Acolytes because it seems Balefire has damage calculation problems with them. A simple Kuvazar or any other fatty OE weapon is more than enough to kill them off within a few seconds. This is a generic build with a Prime Bane 2 in case an X my units proves to be too problematic, but it does not affect Acolytes. Our DPS rotation? Have Matarai Sling Strength and a Power Strength active. A run around, cast Terrify, spam your Balefire at them, watch them die. Cast Pillage relatively often, it doesn't really matter if they become full stripped, you need this to stay alive to offset Terrify's high shield cast cost. That's literally it. If you run out of shields, well, drop a large shield pad, bind it on your hotkeys on your gear wheel, and it'll give you enough back to instantly cast Pillage on this build. Remember to keep your focus buffs active at all times so that its strips work properly. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I'm done with covering the Veilbreaker updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.